Hello everyone, back to you my latest uh, vlog update. So it's over two months since I did a vlog here on the Gabby Pass channel. I have been uh, neglecting the channel, I'm afraid, uh, because I've been so busy with the, uh, with the day job, you know, uh, doing the weather videos. And so it's always a very, very busy time of the year for me uh, at, at this sort of final sort of uh, three, four months of the year period. So, so I'm very sorry about that. I'm very sorry that uh, I haven't had a vlog update uh, posted to this channel uh, for, uh, for a couple of months. But uh, I'm going to rectify that right now. So I am going to bring you a vlog. I, I saw this at the, we're at the Telegraph uh, website, telegraph.co.uk. And I saw this uh, article basically documenting uh, COVID right away from, from the beginning of the infection all the way uh, to the end. And it's a really interesting article uh, and, and sort of outlining the way, you know, the, 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 the progress uh, that, that, uh, that goes on with this uh, illness right from the moment of infection all the way through uh, to, to, the, uh, to the end of, uh, of the infection on a day by day. Uh, sort of basis, and, and I thought it's very interesting. So I'm going to bring uh, bring this article to you uh, in a moment. Uh, just say if, if you're enjoying the vlogs on the channel that I do manage to upload, and I'm not doing as many as I should do at the moment. But if you do enjoy the vlogs, then please can you subscribe to the channel? Make sure uh, you like the video as well. Let us know in the comments what you think. Now, but most of the Telegraph website is behind a paywall, uh, actually. So uh, most of their articles and pieces are. Uh, behind pay paywalls, and you, you have to pay a subscription to be able to uh, to be able to see their articles generally. But they do release a few uh, that uh, that are like public, and and you know that that you don't need to uh, be uh, subscribed to be able to see. And this is one of those articles. I think we're going to be okay uh, with this. You're always you know in danger when you are at a website that is uh, behind a paywall primarily, where he's in a bit of danger about making uh, the, the, the pieces public. But I think with this, it is part of their public um, circulation. So I think we're OK uh, with this. I hope we are. Right, so uh, the headline is from Immunity to Long COVID, the key dates in the human body's battle against coronavirus. The byline is as Donald Trump returns to campaign trail after infection. Here's what we uh, now know about the virus, about how the virus travels through our body. Uh, it is by, the piece is uh, by Anna Guland and uh, it's dated 12th of October today when I am recording uh, the video. So there's quite a introduction. We we won't go through that. It talks about Donald Trump's infection. So uh, where it gets interesting is from here, uh, day one. So uh, day one, COVID spreads between people through direct, indirect, and close contact. As an infected person coughs, sneezes, and uh, speaks, they release droplets. These are then transmitted to others through close contact and may land on a surface. A passerby may brush their hand on the surface and pick up a droplet and then touch their face, allowing the virus to enter body through their mouth, nose or eyes. They could also inhale it after somebody has coughed and, uh, and so on or sneezed and so on. So, so day one, that is like the point of infection, if you like. There's a nice little diagram uh, showing how that infection will happen, uh, you know, how that infection will happen either through uh, droplets from, from the nose or mouth uh, or, in, or ingesting and so on. Uh, day two, uh, at this point, the virus begins to replicate. So, so the patient has now been infected. They have picked up the virus. It's in their uh, throat. And now we're at day two. At this point, the virus uh, begins to replicate in the upper airway and the carrier may be infectious, but not displaying any symptoms known as pre-symptomatic. It is thought that 40% of, infection, of infections are asymptomatic. So you may have had the virus, but not know about it. So 40% of uh, COVID uh, patients have no symptoms. They are asymptomatic from beginning to end. 60% will show symptoms. But 40% is a high number. It's a very, very high number. You know, uh, it's almost, like, almost, but not quite uh, like a 50-50 split between whether you're going to get symptoms or whether you will not get symptoms. Generally, 60-40, it is favouring uh, showing symptoms with coronavirus, but, but certainly there is a very, very substantial number of uh, people who will get this virus and never display any symptoms, which is how it is able to spread so, so very, very quickly, of course. 
Uh, right, day three. This is uh, day three of the infection. Viral load, uh, how much virus you have in your body, starts to build. And this is the time when peak shedding or the point where you are most infectious occurs. This is why self-isolation is so important if you have come into contact with someone who has had uh, or has the disease to avoid passing the virus further. Nice little uh, explanation here that if you have, uh, you know, if you have a, a light viral load, then uh, you are less likely to transmit the disease. There won't be as much virus if you like like to 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 um, to transmit. But if you have a heavy viral load, you have a lot of virus uh, multiplying in your uh, in your throat and upper airway, then you are likely to start really shedding that virus, and and uh, it'll start uh, spreading very very rapidly to uh, other people. I suppose that. That's where the uh, so-called super spreaders um, come from. Uh, so it also shows that uh, this happens with the immune system. So if the immune system is uh, is uh, um, effective in uh, in dampening down uh, the virus replication, then you will tend to have quite a light viral load. Load, but if the immune system gets overwhelmed, then that is when you will start to get a big viral load, uh, and uh, you will become very very infectious indeed. And that is on day three. Right, so uh, day four. Uh, so, so far I haven't had any symptoms, but here we go. Day four. Uh, so day four to five, actually, I think. This is this is actually day five. So we go from day day three. So presumably days three and four are like uh, you, are when you are at your most infectious with the, with the virus replicate. But it's not till day five that you start showing symptoms. So this virus really knows what it's doing, doesn't it? That, that it becomes so very infectious to other people before symptoms will even start start to occur and I think that is something in comparison with other coronaviruses like the common cold for example which is a coronavirus uh, as well and of course like influenza I think influenza is also uh, really infectious before you ever know that you are infected with the uh, influenza virus. Anyway, we've reached day five. No symptoms yet, but here we go. This is when symptoms uh, symptoms typically begin. Uh, most people report a cough, loss of taste and smell, fever, fatigue, and aches and pains. Sounds sounds very much like flu, doesn't it? In in its opening, uh, you know, it's an opening salvo of symptoms. Uh, they say other symptoms in, uh, can include uh, stomach pains, confusion, and labour breathing. I suppose that's if you get a more serious uh, version of the uh, virus. Research. Researchers at King's College London who track coronavirus symptoms and infections via the COVID symptoms app, which has been downloaded by more than 4 million people, report that asymptomatic in that symptomatic individuals uh, fall into six broad categories. Those with severe fatigue, confusion and respiratory or abdominal problems are more likely to develop a severe form of the disease and be hospitalised. However, 80% uh, of those who develop symptoms are able to fight the virus on their own and do not need any treatment. So if you get coronavirus, you get COVID-19, your odds are overwhelmingly in favour, really. Your percentage is in overwhelming favour of, uh, of being able to fight it on, it, on, it, on, it on your own, as you would with, uh, with, with influenza and uh, common cold and, and viruses like that but 20 percent will need uh will need treatment and of those uh, you know some will become very very seriously and it doesn't sound like much 80 to 20 doesn't sound like much but 20 percent is is enough to cause real problems uh especially for for the hospitals and so on and uh and, and you know uh, really cause a uh, tremendous crisis within the health uh, system so 80 to 20 percent sounds like a very high number uh, you know, a high percentage of people who, who will not be hospitalised or become seriously unwell with this. But 20%, although much more significantly less so than 80%, of course, 20% uh, is, is a significant number. And that is why uh, COVID-19 is so uh, concerning. Nice little diagram there going through all the different uh, possibilities, symptoms with, uh, with uh, COVID-19 and coronavirus. Uh, so it continues, whilst uh, not yet in widespread use, it is, is, it is at this point, day five, remember, when symptoms are starting, it is at this point that uh, 
mono, mono, monoclonal antibodies, I probably pronounced that wrong, uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, could be administered. Uh, these are the first treatments developed specifically for the virus and hailed by US President Donald Trump as key to his recovery. Uh, these are laboratory produced injectable antibodies specifically created to treat COVID and uh, work by kickstarting the immune system or giving it a boost in patients who have already started producing their own antibodies. Like our own naturally producing antibodies, the, uh, the synthetic ones attached to the spikes on the outer surface of the virus. Of course, why it is um, called a coronavirus, because it's very crown-like in appearance, and uh, stops it entering the body's cells. Nice little diagram there uh, of uh, the virus entering the cell on the left, and uh, the antibody is preventing, uh, you know, acting as gatekeepers and preventing uh, the, uh, the virus from attaching to, uh, to the cells uh, via the spikes sort of being sort of closed off, locked up, I suppose, uh, by, uh, by the antibodies. Carries on, President Trump was treated with a cocktail of two antibodies uh, produced by US company Regeneron, uh, which preliminary studies show have, have uh, which preliminary studies show to be, uh, to show to have been effective, particularly in patients who have not started uh, to produce antibodies uh, of their own against the disease. The patients in the UK, uh, some patients in the UK will also be given Regeneron antibodies as part of the, of the recovery trial, which is investigating a range of potential treatments for COVID-19. So that sounds like a very promising uh, potential treatment. Uh, right, so we've gone from day five to day seven uh, now. So day five, day six, when symptoms really start kicking off. Day seven, uh, the virus enters the lungs, and it is the point when patients uh, with uh, more severe forms of the disease are most likely to be hospitalised. So it takes around a week uh, from from infection to when you're going to get seriously unwell uh, and not be able to breathe. Uh, it looks like uh, typically on average, I suppose some people that will happen earlier, and some people it will happen later. Uh, so uh, white blood cells uh, called uh, uh, white blood cells uh, called um, chem chemo chemokines uh, will start to fight the virus and kill infected cells, leaving uh, fluid and pus behind. The patient would about breathing problems and may need uh, oxygen. At this point, the administration of antiviral uh, remdesivir uh, could begin. So the virus gets into the lungs, takes over, uh, you know, the, the lungs, uh, invades the lungs, takes over the lungs, uh, and, uh, and then the, the body attempts to fight back uh, via, uh, via the immune system, via white blood cells, and that creates all of the problems that we know that are associated with uh, coronavirus and COVID-19, where people are unable to uh, breathe. And it continues this broad threat. Uh, this broad spectrum antibiotic initially developed uh, to treat Ebola works by blocking a key enzyme uh, the virus needs to replicate its genetic material and proliferate in our bodies. Uh, Remdesivir, I think that is pronounced as, is expensive and also needs to be given intravenous intravenously, so it's not a quick fix. Studies have shown it to be, uh, studies have not shown it to be uh, a game changer, many hoped it would be, and a paper in the British Medical Journal found it may have little or no effect on the length of the hospital stay. A cocktail of several different antivirals may be the best solution uh, for COVID-19. A mix of different antivirals are used to treat HIV and hepatitis C, uh, but there is nothing else promising on the horizon. Days eight and nine uh, get more critical. Uh, this is the crunch point for coronavirus patients. Some may start to recover at this point, but others deteriorate and may develop acute respiratory distress syndrome where the lungs cannot provide the bodies, uh, where the lungs cannot provide uh, the bodies, I will think that's tissue, should be tissues, bodies, tissues, with enough oxygen, this triggers an immune response, but in some patients, immune, the immune system can go into overdrive, setting off a cytokine storm. Uh, cytokines have uh, cytokines are small proteins released by many different by many different cells to treat the body uh, cells in the body, including uh, those of the immune system. But in some patients, excessive or uncontrolled levels of cytokines are released, uh, which then activate the immune cells, resulting in hyperinflammation. This can seriously harm or even kill the patient, 
as it can lead to multi-organ uh, failure. Uh, a cytokine storm is uh, one of the things that uh, typified the Spanish flu in 1918 and 1919 uh, of course and uh, it does appear that, that COVID-19 can also uh, generate a, a uh, cytokine storm within the immune system that, that can uh, you know the immune system itself can uh, kill, uh, kill the patient unfortunately. Uh, days 10 and 11 at this point patient is admitted to ICU they will be given steroid dexamethasone uh, which dampens the immune system and was shown uh, by the recovery trial to cut the uh, risk of death in severely ill patients by a third. Uh, President Trump was given dexamethasone on his illness, which many experts believe is dangerous as it may stop, uh, may, was given it early on in his illness, and many experts believe that to be dangerous as it may stop the immune system from working. Blood clotting is also a problem uh, So with COVID-19, so anticoagulants uh, will be administered at this point. Uh, while well, a patient may be given a, bro a broad spectrum uh, antibiotic to fight any secondary infections as well as fluids. A stay in ICU can last for days or even weeks. In the UK, 20% of patients spend more than 28 days in intensive care. However, death rates in ICU have improved across the world as the pandemic has progressed. One reason for this is that doctors uh, know a lot more about the disease and have learned new techniques. For example, patients on ventilators are prone or laid on their fronts, as this aids uh, lung recovery, a technique that was not widely practiced, particularly in the UK, at the beginning of the pandemic. A study published in July showed that 60% of patients administered to ICU died at the beginning of pandemic, compared to 42% at the end of May. The study was done before widespread introduction of dexamethasone, so death rates uh, may improve still uh, further. However, if ICUs are overwhelmed, death rates may rise again purely because there aren't the beds and the doctors and the nurses to treat everybody, I suppose. Day 12, uh, recovery, immunity and long COVID. So this is at the end now of the uh, infection. Anyone, <coughs> excuse me, anyone who ends up in intensive care will take time to recover regardless of whether they have had COVID-19 or not. Patients admitted to ICU tend to be older, so recovery uh, will take a while. Because COVID can progress into multi-organ failure uh, and multi-organ disease, long-term consequences can include scarring uh, of the lungs and long-term decreased oxygen function, blood clots and heart problems. But even people who have only suffered a mild form of disease report a range of ongoing symptoms such as fatigue, breathlessness, brain fog, uh, the loss of and uh, loss of appetite weeks or even months after recovery uh, from the more acute phase of the illness. The so-called long COVID is not recognised as a syndrome uh, at the moment, but I think it will be for too much longer. Uh, and a researcher from University of Oxford estimates that just one percent of pe uh, people uh, who uh, who recover will still be ill six months later. And so it goes on. Uh, so that is basically the, uh, you know, that is basically how uh, COVID-19, how coronavirus uh, progresses from like the start point of the infection right way through uh, to, to the end, where hopefully the patient has been able to uh, to to fight the COVID-19, fight the coronavirus uh, themselves. If not, then obviously they are in hospital or in ICU and so on. It does explain that people who are in ICU can be in there for a very long time beyond sort of what was that at the very end that was day 12 wasn't it so people can be in there a lot longer in ICU than, than, than 12 days if they get the most severe form of this virus I, I think you found, find that interesting I found it fascinating to see how this virus infects and then you know uh, progresses uh, through the day so, so I thought it's a very interesting piece I'll leave the link to this uh, piece with the, uh, with the video in the description so you can have a read of it for yourself I think as I say, this is part of, um, uh, you know, one of the free articles that, that they have on the Telegraph website. I don't think this one is behind a paywall because I'm not subscribed to, to uh, the Telegraph, uh, but I have been able to, to, to look at this article for myself. So I think this is part of their free range of articles, very small range of, of free articles that, uh, that they have on their website. So, so you should be able to go and have a read of this uh, whenever you would like to do that. Uh, right, if you enjoyed this video, then please give us a like and let us know comments what you think about this uh, video and about this uh, vlog and about this article. And uh, we'll be back with more vlogs very, very soon. As I say, I'm very, very busy at the moment. You know, I'm very busy with, with the Weather Channel 
and it's the busiest time of year for me. Uh, really right from now until uh, Christmas. So so there won't be many vlogs coming up for the end of the year, but I will try and get one or two uh, done for you uh, over the next couple of months. Okay, so uh, that's it then. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, stay safe, everyone. This uh, virus is taking off again. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, we, we, we're probably in a second wave now of the virus. I will try and do a vlog about, you know, about that. Um, being in a second wave uh, in, in a few days' time or so. Uh, but, but we're probably in a second wave of COVID-19. So please take care, everyone. Uh, remember to social distance. Remember to, to, to wash your hands regularly, use masks and so on, and, and just look after yourself. Uh, right, that's it then. Uh, thanks so much uh, for watching. We're back with a new vlog very, very soon. Bye for now.